invite you to turn in your Bibles this wonderful Easter to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and we're going to read verse 1 through verse 20 this morning. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we're going to talk about the buts of the resurrection. Now I want to tell you right off the bat now, when you leave here and you go out about your day today and tomorrow, and they say, what did you preach or preach about this morning or Sunday? Don't tell them buts. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. But we are going to talk about today the buts of the resurrection. Beginning in verse 1 of chapter 15, the word of the Lord records, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. You want to know the gospel of Jesus Christ in the nutshell. These next few verses are going to tell us. First of all, verse 3, that he died for our sins according to the scriptures. Verse 4, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. There's the gospel, the pure gospel in a nutshell right there. Verse 5, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once of whom the greater part remain into the present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. Hey, you want to know if Jesus really rose again? Here the Bible is saying there's over 500 eyewitnesses. That they saw him after he arose from the grave. It's true, friends. He is risen today. Verse 9. For I am the least of the apostles that I am not meet to be called an apostle. Because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believed. Now, if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain. Ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep, Christ, are perished. Wow. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Would you pray with me? Our Heavenly Father, as we kneel before your throne of grace this morning, Father, we are so thankful for your word. Father, we are so thankful for the truth that it is. Father, we are thankful this morning that we can declare Christ is risen. And Father, I just pray this morning, if there's anyone here today that doesn't know this Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, Father, that today they will make that personal. They will receive him into their life today. By your grace, through their faith, we know that can be done. And Father, there may be some here today 
Father, that are just struggling in life. Father, for whatever reason, help them today to know that they have victory and that it's all going to be okay. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There's really only one question about life, death, and eternity. And here's that question in this text. Is Christ risen? Do you remember the question of the Pharisees to Jesus? What sign showest thou? They asked him in John chapter 2 and verse 18. And then Jesus answered in verse 19. Destroy this temple in three days and I will raise it up. <laughs> Praise God. He predicted his own death and he predicted his own resurrection. Amen? Amen. What a great Savior we have this morning. He was talking about his own body. In our text this morning in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 we see the, probably the greatest chapter, in my opinion, of the resurrection. I mean, here Paul's letter is to a troubled church. As you read through the Corinthians, you find out that they had divisions among themselves. They had carnality, immorality, confusion. Hey, is that sounding familiar? It's everywhere, isn't it? But I want you to know today they also had victory. <laughs> here, here Paul ends his letter with truth about the resurrection. And I want us to focus today on just three verses out of this text. And focus in on verse 13, verse 20, and verse 57. All beginning with the same word, but, but... So here's the buts of the resurrection this morning. First, let's look at verse 13. Look at it with me again. But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen. Friends, here we see the frightening prospect or possibility of no resurrection. What if? When I think about the what ifs of history, have you ever thought about what if, like what if Christopher Columbus had not made his voyage? What if Martin Luther had not dared to stand for truth? What if Adolf Hitler had pushed his advantage and had taken England? A lot of what ifs out there, amen? I mean, perhaps this morning some of you have some what ifs of life that frighten you. I mean, I know our younger kids are probably, man, what if they wouldn't have invented the cell phone? Right? Some of you adults are thinking that. What if? Some of you are thinking my life would be terrible. Some of you are thinking I've been delivered. <laughs> but what if? Well, no matter what ifs we can come up with today, I want you to know none can pair with this. But if no resurrection, let that soak in a moment. What if no resurrection? According to verse 14, if there were no resurrection, it says that all preaching would be in vain. I mean, all the great sermons of Paul and the other apostles in vain. All the great preachers all throughout history. John Wesley, who founded the, the Methodist Church. John Knox. Charles Spurgeon. Wow. Dwight L. Moody. All in vain this morning. The Bible says that Christ be not risen. It's saying we can write them off as useless. 
The Bible, the Bible also says here that all faith is vain. Meaning it's empty. Again, useless. Faith is trust, right? It's dependence, right? Think about that. It's faith that brings salvation and brings blessing. Verse 17 says, if no resurrection, you are yet in your sins. If Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain this morning. In verse 18, look at that again. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. The dead are perished, my friends. No hope of heaven. And then verse 19 kind of concludes and says, How miserable we are if all of that is the case. The dead back in that graveyard back there, just dead, perished, done over with. But I want to tell you this morning because Christ is out of the grave today, those graves are going to open up one day. That cemetery is going to look like fresh plowed ground back there. When he comes again, right now their spirit is with him in heaven. It says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But I want to tell you that when he comes again, when he steps out on the glory, on the clouds of glory, when the trump of God sounds, these graves are going to burst open. Those who are in Christ Jesus, and they're going to rise up to be with him in that new glorified body. Amen. Amen. Preach it. Preach it. Woo. But it's all because. He's alive today. He says, because I live, you shall live also. If Christ be not risen, how miserable, how miserable we are. Friends, just think about that. I mean, are you hearing me this morning? Amen. Listen, when the stone was rolled away, suddenly everything changed. Despair was replaced by hope. Fear was destroyed by faith. Death was crushed by Christ's victory. What? Suppose it's all true? Brothers and sisters, it is true this morning. Amen. Christ is risen. So now let's look at verse 57. I'm sorry, I want to go back to verse 20. We skipped that. But <laughs> now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. Here's the shout of triumph, folks. He lives. He lives. No more ifs like in the previous verses that we covered. Therefore, all these formal things do have meaning, right? The gospel preaching is true, folks. Faith is sure. It does bring salvation. It is dependable. Yes, sins are forgiven. The record is clear, in other words, because he lives. The load is lifted. Can you say hallelujah this morning? Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, Christians do go to heaven when they die. And they're going to be resurrected when Jesus returns. And now, verse 57. But thanks be to God which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. If you read a few verses 
Before that, you see that he's dangling again for a time, talking to the people at Corinth. In verse 51 through 56, he's talking about death and the grave and the sin and, and the law there. Well, let's just read it together for context. Verse 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that was written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. In our verse 57, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus You know what it's telling you this morning? If you're a Christian, you are not bound, my friend. You are not bound. There is victory over death. There, there is victory over sin. There is victory over the law. You get to live by grace today. Amen? There's victory over the grave. Aren't you glad Jesus took care of your grave problem today? What a great day it is. What a great message that Paul gave us through the word of the Lord. I want to close this morning looking at verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren... Be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain. <laughs> Friends, what we've got to see here is that responsibility follows truth. <clears throat> The word of the Lord tells us that we need to always be abounding. Isn't that what it says? <clears throat> we need to act on this positive truth and leave all the negatives behind. Friends, we've got to know today that because God is not dead, it means that our lives can be changed. It, it, it means that we can move from stress to rest. Now that's good news this morning. We can move from stress to rest in every area of our life. Because the grave is empty. We can move from stress to rest in our future. We can move from stress to rest in our finances. We can move from stress to rest in our faith. And we can move from stress to rest in our jobs because he is alive today. Listen, I'm just saying because of Easter morning, do you realize because of Easter morning, your past can be forgiven? Sins washed away. Because of Easter morning, your future can be secure. A home in heaven. And because the grave is empty, your present can be made new. A new heart this morning. A new life this morning. That's good news. So maybe you're here this morning and you've never embraced the love of God in your life. I want you to know this morning you can run to him today. 
Just like the Bible declares that Peter and John ran when they heard that that tomb was empty. They ran to the tomb to see. You can run to Jesus today and be made whole. And maybe you're here this morning and, and maybe you just drifted from God. The Bible says in Isaiah 54 and 7 that with deep love, I will bring you back, God said. So you can run to him today. And you can move from stress to rest in your life. Will you trust him this morning? Will you trust him? I'm going to invite you to come to this altar. If you need to make Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life today, you come. I want to pray with you. I want to celebrate that with you today. Would you come and share that with me? Or if you know that you just need to move from stress to rest, would you come to this altar and just run to Jesus this morning? And just do business with him. Listen, friends, I want to tell you. There was this boy one day who was out flying kite. It was cloudy. Matter of fact, the clouds were kind of low. And he was flying that kite. He was just enjoying himself. And some of his friends came running by. I said, Joe, what you doing? They're just flying my kite. They started looking up and they couldn't see a kite. And they just began to laugh at it. Man, you're not flying a kite. Yes, I am. Well, we don't see anything up there. What makes you think you're flying a kite? He said, because I can feel the tug on the string. I know it's up there. Friends, when folks ask me about Jesus, they say, is he real? And I say, yeah, he's real. Jim, how do you know that he's real? Let me tell you how I know he's real. Because I can feel the tug in my heart. Amen. I can feel that tug in my heart. Him prompting me. Lead me, guide me. You know today, He is risen, and it changes everything in your life if you'll only trust Him this morning. Would you pray with me?